I know people who do that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Good morning, everyone. Oh, I need to kind of get in the screen. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. We're too far back. We're too far. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. Now I'm still out of the screen. I don't know. Let's let's. I don't I'll know what to back. do. That's there it. you yeah. go. How's that? Anyway, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's glad to. Have, I'm so glad to have Billy back. We're just sitting here, just yakking about all kinds of things that don't have anything to do with the scripture. Yep. But you know what? It's okay. <laughs> I as my I asked no, 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 airline no, no, miles. No, no. I asked about airline miles. <laughs> I'm 103 years old. I still haven't figured out what airline miles are. So everyone, airline everyone miles, else has it. Airline miles are a good deal yeah. <laughs> if if you know how to use them. Anyway, yeah, my my uh, my brother-in-law when he owned a, a company, a trucking company, he put everything on airline miles, and he never he never paid to fly anywhere ever. Yeah, <laughs> he went all over the world. That's the, the game because yeah. he had all those miles, and that's what that's what they want. They just want you to use the card. So basically, that's it. Mm -hmm. And cards are not bad if you pay them off every month. If you don't pay them off every month, then they then they're bad right. because you don't make any money. You got to pay them off every month, so you have to be really very frugal about how you use them. Anyway, whatever. We're not here to. Talk. Maybe we should look at a, a, a scripture. What scripture on, on, well, there's lots of scriptures about on, finance. Yes, there's a I'm lot. Being a good of steward of your finances. Yeah, there's a lot. And of Ananias and Sapphira coming up. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do so. I don't well. know if they had airline miles. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> they, they would have hidden their airline miles. <laughs> they were they're not flying anywhere soon. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's about the best we can dovetail into this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, anyway, good morning, everyone. We're going to be in the fourth chapter, just so that you can start looking that up in your scriptures if you want. But, but we're going to pray first. Um, you know, it, it's it's just getting. I, I think it's becoming worse and worse and worse. And I, I I hear people. I really want you to understand this. I really do. This is really important to the church, not not just to me, but it's important, I think, to the church. I really want you to know what causes people to be unified. Because we're hearing these conversations. Let, let's be unified. Let's be unified. Well, that would be awesome. Everybody would want that. Nobody right. doesn't want that. I mean, everybody wants that. But it's, it's not going to happen in a political world. It, because uni unity comes by the doctrine you believe. And it, it, it's even in the church it's that way. You have some people who believe a certain doctrine, and they are just kind of by themselves. That's why we have denominations. Right. And so, and so it's it's what you believe. And Scripture tells us that. I can I'll pull all the scriptures out and show it to you. But Scripture is very plain about this. Scripture tells you that what you believe is 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 who you become, and what you believe is the thing that attracts you to other people that believe like you. And you're going, and you're going to be unified with that group of people. But there is not never going to be a complete unity until Jesus comes again, because people don't believe the same things. And you're not going to get Trump supporters and Biden supporters to believe in the same thing. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So when you have they like Sam Donaldson, all these old people, yeah. all these old old people from from yesteryear on the news are coming out and saying, "Let's be unified. Let's do right. all this." They're trying to pull this unity thing together, but it's not going to happen just because you desire it. It's only going to happen when you believe the same thing someone else believes. Now, you can have a truce, and you can say, I'm not going to fight with you anymore, but that you're not going to be unified with that person. And there's a difference between truce and unity. And so God asks for unity, and that's why Jesus tells us in Romans that we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. And so I think for us today, we should pray over that because people people are going to make you feel guilty, which is not okay. People are going to make you feel guilty if you don't think the way they think because they're saying, well, then you don't want to be unified. Well, that's not true. Then the reality is, is that Christians, that's that's why this is so important, what Billy and I are doing and what you're able to say, what, what we're doing. It's important because we are unifying around the concept of Scripture. We're, we're having the mind of Christ. We want to have the mind of Christ. We don't want anybody else's anybody else's doctrine ruling our life. Right. And so the reality is, and if doctrine doesn't just, doesn't just have to be doesn't just have to be the Bible. Doctrine could be any kind of philosophy that you. Yeah, you have a running. doctrine that you run your house. On. Yeah, yeah. Look, the first twelve yeah, apostles yeah. were not unified. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, not, not, Thomas not, clearly not, said, not "I'm not going to believe it." You know? Right. Not till the day of Pentecost. Yes. Right. And, right. Yes. Then. Of right, course. right. 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 And it's the Holy Spirit that that's like the glue. The Holy Spirit brings us mm -hmm. together, and the Holy Spirit will correct you, and this and that. This unity thing, Sam Donaldson, or whoever, these people have an overblown I, uh, idea who they are, as if Sam Donaldson saying is going to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, all yeah. started because they accused Trump 
of dividing the nation. And he, he's a guy who speaks his mind. He tweets things I don't like. But they call that divisive. And so now they're building on, well, we'll unify it. Well, everybody's divisive. Everybody is. Christ is a very narrow road. You're going to look divide. You're going to look narrow. You're not going to. It's not a matter of political party. It's a matter right. of aligning yourself to Jesus Christ. The only way. And that's why we. this this called the way here. We are part of the way. Yes. The way of Christ. Yeah, originally, that's what that's the church, what the church, church was, was called. called. The yeah. way. In the first few chapters of, of Acts, it was the way. Um, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And so Jesus was the way and they followed the way, Jesus. So, but that's why it's important for you when you read scriptures like in Romans, you to have the mind of Christ. Why? Because that unifies you and it's a unity of the Holy Spirit. But it, so why is it a unity of the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit, it says in John 14, 26, will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So when the Holy Spirit is teaching us, then we're going to, if the Holy Spirit is teaching me, he's the spirit of truth. If he's teaching Billy, he's the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. So when he, when he teaches us, he's teaching us the same thing, not a different doctrine. Right. And so a doctrine means the way you, uh, they're, they're, you, have a, you have a constitutional doctrine. You have a biblical doctrine. Doctrine just means a way you think. It just means, it just means the pattern or the, the things that you believe in are true. That's all, that's all that doctrine is. So anyway, yeah. You want well, to no, no. I, 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 I thought you saw you said. Well, uh, I just sorry. go all the way back to Genesis that yeah, uh, go. God said, "Let us create man in our image," and the Spirit hovered over the water to energize the world. It's like God's always had these divine counsels. He's always agreed with Himself. He never yes. contradicts Himself at all. Right. So. And our job's to align with that. So what we're reading today yeah. will not contradict at all with anything else in the Bible. We can be sure of that. Now, we yeah. may mess it up, but we may get confused. <laughs> the way but, that God understands it, it won't be a mess. But it, it, it's, it absolutely fits everything. So if, if, we, if we scratch our head and go, we don't get that, that's our problem yeah, because yeah. it fits. Yeah. So that's what I want to pray for today. I want to pray that people really understand this. And I want to pray that people, especially Christians, look, I don't want you to abandon your Christ-like belief because somebody says you're not willing to be unified. <laughs> and and that, that I think that happens a lot to us. I don't know. I mean, abandon is a tough one. I, I think people mix it in. I think what we're seeing well, now in the church Well, then you abandon is, it then. Okay, well, yes. <laughs> I know. It, uh, it, it gets we, you there. No, we, I know. We want the pure truth, the yes, pure milk. Yes, yes, but yes, a lot yes. of people, even without the political climate, 10 years ago, have been bringing things in the church. A lot, yeah. and, and the church has had a lot of stuff brought in. That's why I say I think that's and, what and happens. That, and, and then eventually you're not the church anymore. The, Satan tries to trick us to abandon our thought process. It's the frog thing you say you, in the boiling yes, water. Yeah. Eventually yeah, yeah, say, yeah, yeah. this isn't a church anymore. We don't even read the Bible. <laughs> yeah, right? It's the lighthouse conversation. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that conversation. And so, so, yeah. so, yeah, the warning is there's going to be heavy pressure from the culture, which we're all part of the culture, yes, whether we yeah. want to be or not. Yeah, yeah to, you can't get away from that. Yeah, to say, agree with us that this ABC... Yeah. And we're, we say we agree with God, ABC. <laughs> so what do well, you, you do? could say, you could say, you know what? I My unity is with Christ. That's what you could and should say. My unity is with Christ. It's not with a political party. It's not, it, it isn't. It's not with a person. Um, we find ourselves being unified with people that think most like us. But it's not a true unity. The only true unity that's going to happen is when we come together with the same doctrine. That's why we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Yeah, I can. And, uh, I can. Those are things we should. I can have a brother or sister in Christ who's Lutheran, yeah, Baptist. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are not. I'm not. Don't label us these things. Right, right. We are biblical Christians. I guess right, is the best right. I can say. Yeah. And that makes us brothers. Yeah. And the reason, again, the reason people fight in the church is because they espouse or think or believe almost violently sometimes yeah. a, a certain doctrine. Like Billy did you a thing. Be baptized. Uh, yeah, I knew you were gonna. I well, I just that thought was that was yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but yeah. but here's here's. But my, you taught about that. My go-to yeah. is if you just read the Bible, it would be unified. But I'm wrong because people who know the Bible interpret it differently. Right, right. So you can't win. But let's just start by saying know your Bible, and and have the Holy Spirit teach you it, and then align yourself with that. Right. And we'll go from there. <laughs> and, and pray for what Jesus tells you to pray for. He tells you to pray for the. He says, "Have the mind of Christ." Pray for that. And be willing to yeah. be flexible. I mean, I've been wrong. You've been wrong. We say, lot, "Oh, yeah. that's scripture," you know. And don't stand and camp on something that makes you a Christian. Because the only thing that makes you a Christian is Christ died on the cross. That's the unity of all of us. The, a belief in that. Yeah, absolutely. Belief in that. Well, again, so the thing that I hope will guide our prayer today is is this thing about unity. 
please don't let please don't let people uh, try to move you away from Christ. Um, and it, and it's very easy to be moved away from Christ. Oh, yeah. And Satan is trying to do that all the time to all of us. He, he doesn't want us to serve the Lord. He doesn't want us to, to fall in love with Jesus. He wants us to follow him. And so he's going to do, he's going to do a lot of things. Like it says in Corinthians, he says, uh, you know, I stand, Paul says, I stand against every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So that he's standing against every thought process that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So should we do that same thing? And I, I guess that's what I'm suggesting that that becomes the, the foundation of our prayer time. Uh, we have lots of people to pray for, Kathy Isaacson, lots of people. God, God knows who they are, and mm -hmm. when we ask Him to, well, even when we speak of Him, that's our prayer for them too, really. And but we we spend, you know, extended time periods praying for those people. Uh, but this morning, I want us to pray spe uh, specifically that Christians, believers in God, really true Christians, people that love Him with all their heart, soul, and mind, they will not be moved off their center by listening to all this conversation that isn't true in the first place. It's not true. And the reason it's not true is because you can't be unified if you don't have the same mindset. And so I'm not going to be unified. And so for you to try to make me feel bad or make me try to do something that's, that's not godly is wrong. I'm not, look, anytime, anytime you're asked to do something that's not completely truthful, that's a sinful thing. Just, yeah. I'm just telling you. So you think those things through, and I want us to be thoughtful kinds of people. You, yeah. you said it was easy because Satan is, you know, the yeah, yeah, yeah. To, and I'll tell you how easy it is for me. I'm studying Genesis. Well, how is, what's that a bad thing? I'm in the Bible, and I'm studying with a guy named, well, I mean, the writer is Henry Morris. He's dead, but he's an apologist. So what he does is he's always shining a light on evolution versus creation, saying, well, evolution says this, creation that. Well, as I'm reading, I'm going, hmm, <laughs> you know, some of these evolution ideas aren't bad. I, I, I'm sort of moved going, I, wonder, I didn't know that. I wonder about that. Right. So even when I'm studying God's word, looking at a good writer who wants to lift up creationism, um, you start to study other things. What's it mean to be human? What's a sentient being? And you, on the Internet, you go, oh, oh, oh. And, uh, and, and, and I feel I'm a grounded Christian and I can be moved. So if, anybody can be moved. If we don't think we can, then we're in big trouble. That's true. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah. Um, if the culture was is screaming at you right now, it's a very loud noise. It's a very um, loud noise. That's a good way then, to put it. Then you have to be, you have to protect yourself. Yeah. And, and have the mind of Christ. Please have the mind put of Christ. Put on the armor. Of God, Please yeah. have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Please have the, yeah. you know, think the thoughts of Jesus and you'll be fine. <laughs> if yes. you think Jesus' thoughts, you'll be, you'll always win. Always. Maybe should actually be the homework. Read all the red. Yeah. Just read red. <laughs> Just read the red. And speak the red. Yeah. <laughs> but the thoughts of Jesus are the Bible too. That's what no, came I, out of it. These yeah. are all the thoughts of Jesus. These are, this is God's yes. word. This is God's letter letter to me mm -hmm. so he's he wrote me a letter and this is it and we're just reading through the letter basically so anyway so yeah that's enough of that batting that around a little bit probably okay. let's, let's pray thank you father for this morning and thank you for your holy spirit father we pray that your spirit of truth be on us that your spirit of truth pour upon us again you say in the last days the spirit will pour on us so father here we are we want an upper room experience lord jesus we want to be clothed with power from on high so that we might glorify you in all that is said and done in our lives. Father, we, I am so far from that, and I, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for, for being so distracted by many things and, and so um, willing sometimes to follow the voice of the world when that is the wrong place for me to go. I ask you, Father, for your forgiveness. I ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness, and I ask you, Lord Jesus, to wrap my life be a life that glorifies you. Let me have the mind of Christ today. I pray that in Jesus' name. Jesus, let me have the mind of Christ. Let me think the thoughts of God. Let me have those thoughts in my mind. Let those thoughts, let me turn to those thoughts and away from the other kinds of noise, the loud noise that kind of distracts me from Christ. So, Father, I pray that that would happen for me and for all of those who we're speaking to today and speaking with today. I pray, Lord God, that you would minister to a great deal to us today, that your Holy Spirit would come, your Holy Spirit would teach, your Holy Spirit would cleanse, your Holy Spirit would transform. I pray that that all happens, that your Holy Spirit, Lord, 
would allow us mostly, Lord, to glorify the Father with the way that we speak and the way that we act, the way that we live, the way that we think. Thank you, God, for that. And Father, for those who we've come to, to love and care about in our fellowship, those who need prayer like Kathy Isaacson, we ask the Father that you will heal her in Jesus' name. <laughs> I just pray, God, that you will just heal her. Thank you, Jesus, for for doing that in the name of Christ. We pray for healing in her body, that healing would take place in Jesus' name. And Father, I just pray too that you would move in a very special way um, in all the rest of the people that we have um, have been concerned about over the last few years, Lord, in the last few months as we've gone through this. I pray, God, that you would move in their lives, that you would minister to them. If we even forget them out of our memory, Lord, I know that you don't. And so I pray, Father, that you really would reach down and just touch their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for that. There's so many people that I'm thinking of, Lord, please take all those people and all those conversations about all those people, Lord Jesus, and minister to them, even now as we speak, Lord God, about them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for Billy being back. Thank you for our time, Lord God, together. Thank you for the fourth chapter of Acts, and we ask that you let this word, Lord God, move in our lives transform us make us different because we've spent a few minutes in your word today thank you father in jesus name in jesus precious name um, amen can i totally agree with that i can't add anything to that prayer i just uh, agree with that lord and pray that you would do uh, the work that rick just spoke uh, and as we open your word in jesus name amen amen yeah. amen it's like the you, you suck every prayer you know, oh sorry yeah. no no it's good it's good <laughs> Good. I didn't yeah. leave anything for I'm sorry, God. Yeah, why would I? I'm not going to repeat anything you said. I'm just gonna... <laughs> why am I going to pray? Huh? No, what, I I want, what I want to pray is what he said. <laughs> and that's, what, that's what amen means, right? Yeah, I, I'll have what he's having, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. So we've just we've just done some amazing things in the third chapter of the book of Acts, or we haven't. We just went through them. <clears throat> we've just seen that the prophets, all the th all the conversations in the Old Testament of, that the prophets have have made are going to come to going to come to a yes and amen, going to come to fruition before Jesus comes again, and He promises to do that. And we've seen already that we're in the last days, and in the last days, the Holy Spirit is going to pour out upon all people. And, and now we're watching Peter preach two sermons. Mm -hmm. And that, as he preaches both of these sermons, now we have about 5,000 men plus all their wives and children right. who have given their life to Christ. So we have this great expansion from people from all over the world. And now, I don't know, maybe we talked about this. This goes way back in our first conversation here when. Right, the, who were listening. Yeah, it it kind of lists yeah, it for yeah, us. Yeah. It's, it says what, what countries they're Yeah, from. it tells us from Egypt and Pamphylia and all these right. co different countries. But. But how long do you think they stayed with the apostles' <clears throat> teaching before they released to go back to their, they were released by the Holy Spirit to go back to their I know, home? that's because we know that they, a Pentecost is a Jewish holiday. Right, it's it's right. 50 days after Passover. Right. And so it's one of the, it's not one of the pilgrimage ones. The, the, you don't have to go to that. So people would stay for that. Well, obviously the apostles stayed. Jesus said stay. Right, right, right. And you know they didn't know it would happen on pentecost but maybe they thought that but they were in the upper room and it happened so these people either were not there for passover and came back or maybe they stayed so they were hardcore jews uh but after they had this that i guess experience. that's a good question for anybody once i had the experience how long did i stay in my life yeah i yeah. didn't much I, right. I god moved me from you know sports writing you know into teaching um so you should have a, i'm not saying you should change jobs but uh they might have just stayed and become part of the fellowship and I think Ananias and Sapphira were probably, those are Greek names. They were, um, they might have got saved at Pentecost and stayed right. and said, we want to be part of your, right. you know, they, they, they held everything in common. We're going to get to that part. So and some, at some point. I think they, if it says 5,000, yeah, it means the church is 5,000. No, no, I know that. But so what could, I'm talking, could they have gone home? Or, well, uh, they were from all these different places. So yeah, I'm sure that sometime, I mean, they had families back there. Yeah, they had, all, they yeah. had homes, they, they never had thought businesses, that. Yeah, sure. all that stuff. So they had to go back sometime, I think. I would it's think, like here, we have people that consider themselves part of our church, but we don't see regularly. But yeah. they're still part of, this is yeah, their yeah, church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they come down to the desert, they right. come and visit yes. us. Yeah. Sure, maybe. It's interesting you brought up Pentecost. Let me read this. The Apostle Peter describes the time of spiritual refreshment that took place on the day of Pentecost. So that's when it that's when it began. Mm -hmm. That's when it started. He exhorts his listeners to repent and respond to the gospel that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Acts 3:19. 
This is what we talked about yesterday. Yeah. The apostles' statement was especially meaningful to the Jewish audience with its reference to the millennium, millennium uh, when Messiah would rule. But the good news of, of spiritual life would also be extended to the Gentiles. And we see that mostly coming about in the 10th chapter of the book of Acts when we get there. So that's just kind of a catch-up thing. This all started to happen right. at Pentecost. And now we're on our way and we're reading now the beginning, the impetus of the church. We're reading now the conversations that took place. We're reading now the teaching that took place. We're reading now the, the, the customs that began to be formed in the church and how the church is, moves along. And one of the things that you'll read that, that you get all the, all the way through is with, with, with Jesus. And I, when he was first here, he met with them in small groups. He met with them in the temple. That was, that was continued in Acts 2. They met in small groups and they met in the temple. You'll find out that as we go to the very end in Acts 20, in, in fact, it's 2020, in Acts 20, it says they met in small groups and in the temple. Right. So that, there's some customs like that that we see, and that happens a lot in churches <clears throat> today still. And I don't think so, Peter yeah. at this point yeah. knew it was that the Gentiles would come in. He was right, speaking. Right, and a lot right, of things right. we speak that are prophetic. Pentecost just to, is, is the Feast of First Fruits, right. which is an interesting one because, you know, it's a spring thing. and um, The harvest has happened. Right, and Christ is our first fruit. Yeah, He's yeah. the first fruit. He's the first man risen from the dead who will... Um, be in heaven with the Father, and then so so that's a great time to have this, to start the church with this Holy Spirit thing, right. because all of us who are filled with the Holy Spirit are we follow Christ. Yeah. He's the first fruit He's of the, the resurrection. Fruit, yeah. He's the first one to come to bring us this message of the Messiah in this way, and He's fulfilled everything, and He's the beginning of this. So yeah, yeah. so verse so that's where we've been, and that's so that leads us to the fourth chapter. It says the priest and the captain of the temple guard. And the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. Well, what were they? What were they speaking about? Resur resurrection. Well, Jesus. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they were speaking of the. But but what? Do you remember, it was because that the the guy at Gate Beautiful got right say or got healed. Yes. And and he said he was healed completely. So I believe there's a salvation piece, piece to that as well. So he's completely healed. All this commotion is taking place. They're speaking. That draws a crowd together. They're speaking, and then they, there's a there's a sermon, and then at the sermon, that second sermon, then those two thousand people are saved. The second, but time. yeah, he he and takes it off the man. He says, yeah. "Forget the man. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is Jesus. Yeah. Look at Jesus. And this is yeah. the one you killed, and he's our Messiah. Yeah, yeah. This is the this is the personal God who is now with you, even though you killed him. And that's what right. he says. Okay. So the priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. That's verse one. <laughs> Excuse me. They were <clears throat> greatly disturbed. Well, <laughs> look, folks, please understand this. People do not like us as Christians. And they don't like us as Christians because they don't like our message. And they don't like our message because it, it doesn't bring unity with their message. <laughs> and they just told us, well, so these guys were mad. Well, it's right? like burning coals. It burned, you yeah. know, people know they're wrong in their spirit, uh, and they don't want to accept Christ, and then they see your life. So if people aren't upset, some people may not even know you're a Christian. Right. It's your job, and that's that's too bad, because they, <laughs> yeah, they, sh they should know bad. what you believe, yeah. and not yeah. with forcing it on them, and uh, it should upset them. By the way you live in your life. Right? You, it's right. a two-way, what? It's a fragrance of life and right. a stench of death. So right. when people know you're a Christian... Uh, some are going to come to you and say, what's this all about? And other ones are going to hate you and you won't know why. Yeah. And these people were on the hate side. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, they were very bold about what yeah, they were saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, a lot of people that hate, are, they it, it boils over onto you pretty quickly. No, I meant Peter yeah. was bold. Yeah, yeah. In the, he's in Solomon's porch talking right. about the resurrection. Right, right. These people don't believe in the, the resurrection. Res Sadducees do not believe no. in the resurrection. No. And that's, who, he's, that's what, who came up to him. Right. It wasn't the Pharisees. Yeah, the Sadducees don't. And that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. We'll get to that. Okay. Uh, yeah, but that, that's a good point. They don't believe in the resurrection, and all, all really, truly, all Peter has been talking about is the resurrected Christ that he's with you now. And these guys don't even believe in the resurrection. If you stood outside this church right now and drew a crowd and preached something other than what we believe as Christians, Rick would come out and say, "What's this about?" 
Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. If, if you were out there, if you were out there with political messages or whatever, I'd say, hey, you know, you can't do that. Here. Not here. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so he, they're on yeah. the property of the temple. Right, right, right. right. Preaching right. something the temple doesn't preach. Yeah, and and don't believe in. Right. They think they think, not their doctrine. Yeah, that's yeah, not their doctrine. That again, there you go. Not yeah. that, that's perfect. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. See that again. That's why I said you know, that's we'll get to it upset. in a second. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're upset. Because of this conversation of the resurrection, because they don't believe in the resurrection. They, it, it, if you don't believe it, then don't talk about it. You know, I'm mad at you because you're talking about this. And they, this is how we get, right? When we believe something, and it really is a part of our fabric because we believe it so much, right. then it makes us really angry when we hear people saying something that's against what we believe. And so... You, yeah, you guys have heard of Pharisees, yeah, and yeah. You, you say, well, you're Pharisaical, you're legalistic. Yeah. The Pharisees, um, they were like fundamentalists. They're like us in a way. Mm -hmm. And they attacked Jesus. They were totally against Jesus because Jesus didn't follow their rules. He didn't wash his hands. They ate the, the, yeah. the grains. He healed on the Sabbath. Right. They said, you have to do it our way. This yeah. is bad. Yeah. The Sadducees, they, they never, you never see a Sadducee come up and attack Jesus. They're attacking the church. Because the church is teaching a resurrection from the dead. Right. So they can't have that. And later, yeah, right. I don't know if we'll get it to the day, when they, they tell Peter, they lock him up and they say, okay, you can go, but just stop telling people we killed Jesus. Yeah, you know, you yeah, got to stop yeah. telling people we killed and Jesus. And that he raised from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> because this is really bad for business yeah, that yeah. you're saying the Sadducees killed Jesus. Yeah, and now they won't come hang out with us anymore you yeah, know, because so, they're following you. But that's yeah, what they're yeah, telling yeah. me. So yeah. they're, they're, your mind says they're grieved that they taught the people that Jesus was resurrected. Well, well but that's what I mean. It's it's, yeah, it's yeah, an emotional response. That's a good way to put well, it, right? It's King James. So. Well, no, but that's a good, that's a great way to say it. They're grieved. Yeah. There's an emotional response. You know that you know that when in your own life when somebody says something that is just a part of your fabric, a part of your being, yeah. and you believe it with everything right. that you are, and all of a sudden, like like if somebody came to Billy and said, "Thanks for preaching, but Jesus isn't God," and I don't care what you say, and yeah. Billy's going to say, you know, the hair on the back of his head's going to stand, and he's going to start giving being an apologist. An apologist is a defender. He's going to start being an apologist for. Jesus, right Actually, away. Actually, someone yeah. uh, at one twenty this morning I was uh -oh. away, texted Luann <laughs> oh, wow. and said they've been watching and they have a person they've been praying for for a few years who uh, wants, you know, doesn't want to come to Christ unless you can prove it and thought of me and wants me to talk to this person. So there I'll go. I mean, I'll pray my way into that. But yes, I yeah, yeah. I will be gentle and this and that. But that's that's out there. There's, now, this is right. a, a person who's willing to listen. Right, right. A right. lot of other people. And when it says here, it says they were the, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came. This wasn't just Rick going out and getting rid of the people with the signs. The, the captain of the people of the temple police. So these are the <laughs> thugs a little bit. I mean, they came on. They Yeah. They arrested them, with, and there was no charge. Yeah, yeah, they seized them, it says here in verse 3. But they're going to put so them in they jail arrested, for the night. Yeah, and, yeah. They go, and they go in jail, right? Yeah. Which is an amazing conversation, right? They the seized, authority. Yeah, they have Do the you authority. have the authority to put someone in jail here? Where's our <laughs> well, jail? Well, these guys do, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll put them in the Captain Billy bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they seized Peter and John, and because it was evening... They put them in jail until the next day. Well, why? Because they they didn't want to mess with them, so they thought, "What?" Well, you we can't have a yeah. you can't have a trial at night. The Jews right. they, they follow certain rules. You can't have a trial. They're going to have a trial, or they're going to come before the council. Right. But you can't do that they're, after. Well, the that's night. yeah. That's what makes what happened to Jesus so appalling. I was going to say you right can't there. do it unless your name's Jesus. Yeah. Then we'll do because it. Because remember, they took him at night. <laughs> so hypocritical. Yeah. So, but they wouldn't do it with Peter here, and nope. and, and and anybody else that was arrested. They wouldn't take Peter and John. We know they're so. They, yeah. they, it's the jot and tittle. What did Jesus say? You 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 you, you tie the uh, the you oh. measure the mint and the whatever. And the cumin. But you miss the bit. You miss grace and you miss compassion. They're so about the details, and we have religions like this. People, yeah. our church could be this way, not me or you, yeah, yeah, but yeah. but you don't want to be that way. You want to keep picture the big picture. Yeah. So these guys, were, they didn't want to do anything illegal, yes. even though they did something <laughs> illegal, illegal with Jesus, right? Jesus You're right. Too, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. We were, thank yeah. you for bringing that up. So, But many who heard the message believed. So look, they're going, I don't care if these guys don't like it. I don't care if I get arrested. So there must be something very powerful about this message. That, yeah, that they got arrested, and these Jews still all, believe it. I think they're from all over. Yeah, still. yeah, yeah. Do I you think, think so. they're still yeah, there? Sure, okay. sure, sure. So these Jews are still there are still believing even though two guys got arrested and it could be them. Yeah. It happens with when a, a, an author dies, 
uh, he gets more popular or a singer dies. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying whatever. this yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. but um, they're being persecuted and people are saying their their hair on their neck stands up and says, Wait this a isn't right. Yeah, yeah maybe that's it. Maybe yeah, that's this it. isn't right. But but again, what's what is what is the thing that the common denominator here is that they are the Holy Spirit is poured out. That's the common denominator. Here. Yeah. We're still look, we're in the last days still. We started then, we're still now in the last days. The Holy Spirit should be being and I don't know if that's correct English, but should be being poured out constantly, consistently on us. Oh no, it's correct. So, and, so, and yeah, I, I've never been yeah. in a battle or a war, but they say stand fast, or you know, you're supposed to with his bullets coming at yeah. you. How do you keep a man doing that? What kind of training does it yeah. take? Yeah. Well, when Rick says have the mind of Christ, and and God says stand firm, right? It's the Holy Spirit. You're not yeah, going to yeah. do it. like you just said to me. If I think that I can read an apologist about evolution and not fall, uh, but I could, if, that's yeah. where I'm in trouble. Yeah, right. That's yeah. where I'm in trouble. I have to understand. So, so the this is the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes, yes, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. But it's because they're in the last days and the Holy Spirit is being poured out. Please understand that about yourself. And when we speak to people, when we pray, when things, when situations look absolutely like there's nothing that can happen good in this situation. That's the best time. <laughs> look, yeah, that, that's the time of you're restoration. Yeah. It's the time of restoring. You're in the time of restoring. You have to know that by faith, that the Holy Spirit is being poured out. The Holy Spirit is in you, and the Holy Spirit is being poured out. He is being poured out on those you're speaking to. And and so so even if you get arrested, see, this is the cool thing. I love this scripture because it's like they get arrested, people still believe God's glorified. Yeah. E even though something negative happens to them. We have, I've been thinking about this for the last few weeks so, so hard that in Christianity in America is so selfish. <laughs> Like, what are you going to do for me today, God? Well, it's lined you know? up with something Something I see as positive, God's good. Something I see yeah. as negative, well, God's bad now. Yeah, 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 and, it's yeah. not, and it, actually, he's more powerful yeah. in the, in the negatives. negative. Yeah. It's like Rick, here's what Kathy said um, the other day about you. She said she oh. wanted you to pray for yeah, her. Yeah, and I called her and prayed for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's communication. But she said because he's the healing pastor. So, you know, I've, I've kind of built that reputation up. But Thank you. It doesn't matter. Here's, <laughs> yes. here's what Rick's not going to do. If Rick's going to pray for somebody to be healed, he's not going to say to God, I've got this. He's yeah. never going to, but in oh, our no, life, no, no, and no, as no, much no. as you prayed, let's say, yeah. do you ever go into prayer and say, well, I've done this before. I've got this. We should never say, well, I've got this. We it, should always rely on the Holy Spirit new every day to help well, us. Well, if, you, if you'll read the prayer, I write my prayers out most of the time. and You say, teach me how to pray. And the very beginning line of every, <laughs> yeah, you've know, seen yeah, you've you've hundreds us, yes. of pages of worth prayer. The very beginning line of every day is, Lord. But in our lives, pray, we, yeah, yeah. we know how to tie our shoes. There's things we have and we say, I've got this. Yeah, we don't got this. You don't. I don't have this. And so when things yeah. have coronavirus or political this and that, you go, what happened? You don't have this. Relax. And it's okay. Yeah, it's okay you don't have yes, it. Yeah, yeah. Let those, so here's Peter. He, something negative, yeah, I mean, they're not fighting. They're not saying, you can't put us in jail. Yeah, yeah. Something negative is happening to them. They get arrested. And they get. I mean, that would be negative in anybody's book. Sure. They're negative. They it, So so they get arrested. They get put into jail. But some people still believe. Lots so people. God is glorifying himself. Even when Satan thinks he's winning, he's not. Right. Please understand that. Satan is not ever winning. He is not. He is still in control. I love the way Karl Barth, who was a theologian who's passed away now, obviously, for those of you who know the Bardian theologians, but Karl Barth talks about Jesus this way, and it comes from the book of Revelation. He says, he says, Satan is a mad dog on a chain, but Jesus has the other end of the chain. So it's like he can only go where he's allowed to. He's, the, he's Jesus is still in control. And that, and it shows that here because if, if if there wasn't a presence of God here, trust me, these people would have scattered when that happened. Yeah, because the, yeah, the, they they would have they would have followed the culture. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and the way Peter yeah. did with yeah. the with the slave girl. Yes. Same so thing. it's yeah, yeah. here's the thing I watch, just want to say for the other side because they're blind, and they believe as strongly that we're wrong. Absolutely. As as and, and these Sadducees believe as strongly that and so do the Muslims and all kinds of religions believe that. We're from Satan, that Satan's right, running right, with us. Right. So it's all perspective. Whichever, but so you need to, the first thing you have to do is find the truth, which is in the Bible, and the whole, and that'll set you free. Right. And once you have the truth, stay in it. Yeah. But d d don't believe for a second the other side thinks, they, they think they have the truth, and they think 
that Satan's winning. But uh, some of us. us, some of them though, have a mixed conversation about who we are. Uh, like for example, like cults, like the Mormons. The Mormons believe that we don't have all the truth, but they believe we're going to go to heaven because we're Christians. We're on the third level. We're on the yeah. third level, but, yeah. but we're okay. It's the people that don't believe anything or that, right. that they're the ones that are really in trouble. And so that's why they don't So you don't really, want, okay, yeah, so you don't mixed, want, you don't want mixed yet. messages? You, you don't, don't want mixed messages. No one's your enemy, yeah. whether they're mixed messages right, right, or whatever. Right, right, right. They are blind. Yes, yes, Because they blind. when they see yeah. the truth, They'll have unity with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And well, and <laughs> when they see the doctrine of Christ, they just, oh, I love because this he's, conversation. He's, yes, he's, he's you know, unambiguous. Yes, he, he, he does That's it. That's true. He, you just you can go, you may be more comfortable in Lutheran or Baptist or Nazarene. Right, right. Fine, but we we are unified by the spirit of what Christ says. Yes, and and yeah. and we're brothers and sisters, and we should never fight over. The bathroom, or the sound of the music, or you know, the those. Oh things. man, the church those, has been in a lot of those stupid are silly, fights. Silly, yeah, really stupid yeah. fights, really silly. Anyway, they seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put him in jail until the next day. But they who heard, but many, excuse me, who heard the message, many. That's a that's a big word. Yeah. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about five thousand. You want to know the King James in verse 4? Yeah. Howbeit, many of them which heard the word believed. <laughs> yeah. What does that even mean, howbeit? Yeah. Well, well because. <laughs> because. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, you, you might think that it would, what well, howbeit means is you might think it would be the other way around. Yes. But it's not. Yes. They believed any, they believed. Indeed. Yeah. So that so this is just an amazing conversation. What time do we have here? 10, uh, 10, 10, 36. We're, 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 look right here. It's 36. Oh, it's up there. So yeah. we, we're, yeah, we've yeah. gone 36 minutes. Yeah. Now. So we got a few minutes. Okay. So we'll continue here. But anyway, so they're in jail. They're they're away. Um, and and this number keeps growing to to the, this amount of people. So 5,000 means that he had 3,000 the first time. So there were about 2,000 this time. Yeah, and I don't yeah. know that Peter yeah. and John are the leaders at this point in the church, uh, even though they look like it, because they this was, to be this was way, an yeah. accidental thing. They're going like anyone else to pray, because there's still 12 or 11 of them, 12 of them. Oh, yeah, yeah they yeah. picked Matthias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy asked for money, go, we ain't got any money. Yeah, and right. and yeah. this this event happens, yes, and now they look, like, yeah, yeah. they look like leaders. And so maybe they are. The, well, it's, I think it's the same for all of us. I think that if we are really open to the Holy Spirit and we believe, I mean, these guys had just spent some 10, these guys just spent 10 days and 120 people up in an upper room and they were praying and the Holy Spirit endued them with power from on high, came on them with tongues of fire. Well, what do you, you always say so, about influencers? There's, what's that word you use? There's, um, um, in, in, the, in the church, there's yeah. certain kinds of influencers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. people who are... Uh, there's, well, there's formal and informal There you go. That's it. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. John Maxwell. So, so a formal influencer, you know, has a degree in this and that, and that's the person you go to to pray for your healing. Or a, or a title. Or a title. Okay, yeah, a title. That's yeah, better. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, informal influencers like Peter and John, because I can tell you that John's like 18 years old. He said he is not the leader of the church. <laughs> James, who is, Peter, who is Jesus' brother, who's going to come on, they're going to respect that guy. Yeah. And they do respect Peter's a right. big, burly guy. But John... Is just along for the ride here in jail, but yeah. but this looks like the leaders. Yeah, you know they they do. And it's like us. Whenever the Holy Spirit is being poured on us, and whenever we understand that we're we we have to have a mental conversation. We have to have a cognizant idea that that we are in the last days. You have to know that in your head. You have to think that. And in the last days, the Holy Spirit's going to be poured out. You have to know that. Think that in your head. And that means that any place you go, God can do an amazing thing. Whatever so Rick what can do here. or say or pray, not, you can do. Well, I, what, I'm nothing. You well, that's not yeah, yeah. what I'm, Whatever but Jesus But you have the, a title. Yeah, yeah. You, you have the, a title. You, I have a title. So what you have to get in I'm your sorry. head is that, that you are the church. It yes. Gives, you are the holy, yes. the, the, the temple of God. And wherever you walk, the church goes. And you can do everything. Now, it's great to have a buddy like Rick and pray together. Of course, we want to do that. But don't... We're all the same. Once the Holy Spirit comes, we're equal at the cross, and you have yeah, all the power yeah, He has. We have different gifts, let's say, but so what? Look, so this is the thing. When you're walking down the street, the Holy Spirit may say to you, go over and say to that person, whoever it is, um, God loves you, or or God has something for or you. can I or, pray for you? Can I pray for you? Scott Burns does that. He's awesome yeah. at that. Mm -hmm. He walks up to people, and he's pumping their gas. Hey, 
You know, I'm just standing or over here. Or a waitress. Or, yeah, it's just, you know what? I have to hide my head. It's like, oh, well, it's, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's <laughs> well, embarrassing, it's isn't bit, it, really? Yeah. Because he's so bold about it. But and, they, and we get embarrassed. We shouldn't be no, embarrassed. I know. I'm I know. That's our bad. That's yeah, our bad, saying. right? That's not I just, bad. I just that's want to, our bad. I just want to order my meal. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just here to eat a burger. I don't want that stuff. But, but see, that's the point. He's open to that. And he knows he's in the last days. And he knows the Holy Spirit's pouring out. And he hears the voice of the Lord say, go pray with that person. And, and he says, even if it's not the voice of the Lord, I think I'm supposed to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah, he takes and, the risk. And yeah. he, he takes the risk. And guess what? Many times over, he's been blessed. Rick, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott says a lot, no harm, no foul. Yeah. What well, yeah. does it hurt if I ask to pray? And she says, no. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no harm, no yeah. foul. I, I, asked, I asked a guy the other day um, if I could pray for him in a restaurant. Big old burly. I'm, I'm, I will... Lay money on it. And I don't. I don't bet. But I'd lay money. This guy's a big old gangbang, big old guy, you know. And he, and he was hobbling. And I thought. And I said, Hey man, do you do you believe in your prayer? He said, No. And I said, Okay. I said, I'm just gonna ask if I ever pray for him. He said, Don't ever pray for me. And I thought he was gonna attack me. And I said, Okay, man, no problem. I'm just gonna get my Chinese food and get out. <laughs> you know. And and so I mean, he was like, and I'm I'm not a small guy. He was a big guy to me. He was big. If he was big and burly compared to you, he's big and burly. <laughs> and so bigger and, and burlier. And then there was a guy two days ago that I took some cans to back that I had in my house and at a in the and and I said to this guy sitting on his car bumper, I said, How you doing? He said, No, not so I said, What's wrong? And so he starts telling me, he said, can I pray for you? He goes, oh, yeah, I believe in prayer. So I just stopped there and laid hands on him and prayed for him. And I don't know what happened to him. Right. I don't, and I, but that's not my thing. My thing is that I'm supposed to be open because there may be a time when I pray with somebody, I'm going to say, I don't have that, but just get up and walk. And right. God's going to do that. Why? Because I'm living in the last days and the Holy Spirit is being poured out. And you have to be open to that. And you might get taken to jail. Guess what? Some people will believe. Yeah, yeah. That's the point of this. But whole you can do these things. What, we're, what yes. I'm trying to say is, cut yeah. out the middleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't call Bill, Billy to do it. Just do it. That's what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, cut out the middleman. Yeah. You are fully locked and loaded to do this mm -hmm. if you if you're willing to uh, be obedient. And and why are they why are they why are they able to do this? Because they've said they they believed in Christ and the Holy Spirit's come in you and the Holy Spirit is it's not you, it's not you doing it. It's because it's the last days oh, and no, the Holy Spirit. It's been poured out, yes. and it, that's why right. it's not you at all. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, no, mean, I, yeah, I, no, no but I, I, don't, I don't mean to talk down Peter and John. No, 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 no. But, I don't think you are. But the real leader of the church is, is it's the Holy not, Spirit. Yeah, true, but it's not John in, in a man's form. It's not John. Right. Uh, John's gonna write some great stuff here, but they're not following Later. him. Yeah. yeah. So um, you may think you're like John. You may be the young in the church, immature Christian, this and that. You can be used powerfully. Well, well, Paul Paul talks to Timothy and says, don't let people talk to you about yes. your youth. Mm -hmm. Just do it. Yes. You know, but some of us are old. Don't let don't let Satan bother you about being old. Just right. go do it. Why? Look, get in your head. Please put this in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. Look, you're in the last days. In the last days, the the Holy Spirit is being poured out upon you. In the last days, the Holy Spirit is being poured out upon you, and you have the Holy Spirit in you. Just let things happen, and my goodness, things will happen. Yeah, you know they really will. And so that's who you're supposed to be. Now, right now, this is what I think Satan's trying to do. I think Satan is trying to stop the church. And he's trying to stop the church with this pandemic. You can't, you can't meet. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't. But you know what? Nothing is going to stop the church. I don't care what rules and regulations they put on you. And there are some churches, and I'm praying for those. I was praying this morning for a church here in Indio that decided we don't care what they say. We're going to meet. We're going to meet without masks. We're going to meet all the time. I'm praying for those people because look, if if something happens right now, especially in California. If something happens in that group of people, it's it's going to come down on all of us because it, we're the church and well, the church isn't paying attention. Here's a, here's a perfect so, parallel. So we're going to be in trouble. They locked up Peter and John and the yeah. church grew. Right. They've locked up the church now and, and the, the church, church is, is growing. growing. Right, right, right. It's so same, same point. So though. just pray for people who are following the rules and people who aren't. It doesn't matter. That's not the issue. The issue is that it's the Holy Spirit's pouring out. You go out there. The ch Satan cannot stop the church. You go out there. In fact... If we will recognize this, I, this, this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a prophetic saying. I'm gonna give you something prophetically today. If you will do this, 
in this time of lockout, in this time when things aren't good, God's going to send you people or send somebody in your way, put somebody on the phone with you or online with you or however you communicate with people, and the Holy Spirit is going to fall on people. Things are going to happen. It's going to be... Why? Because you're living in the last days. We forget that. And and we do that. We we say that on the negative side, not the positive side, right? Well, yeah. Oh, we're living in the last days. Oh, no. Oh, no. Then stop it. No more, to, yeah. no more time to sin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, your expectations <laughs> yeah, shouldn't, you. affect, shouldn't affect the outcome. So I'm going to go... This person who wants me to talk to the guy who says, well, if you can prove God to right, me... Right, right, okay. Right. If uh, he could be the big burly guy that says, I don't, you're a, you're a fool. Yeah, yeah. I'm still going to glorify God. Yeah. Or the Holy Spirit could fall upon him yeah. and he could come and, I'd, and God's good either way. Yeah. So it doesn't change what we do. The lockout, uh, yeah. the, 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 the who's in the uh, political offices, right. it doesn't change what we do. We follow the Lord. That's right. our that's our that's our perspective. It's that's the I'm trying to take the word he says mind of Christ and put it in other different words for you because that's what it means. You live your life that way. You know? Jesus yeah, and Jesus said something that I think was I mean everything he said well, was great. profound. Yeah, but, of course. But this was so profound because it's so opposite of who we are as human beings. He said, I only do and say what the Father says. That's what he says. He says, I only do and I only say what the Father tells me to do and say. That's it. I don't do anything else. Well, if that's the mind of Christ. Yeah, so if that's your mindset, then only do what the Holy Spirit says. Yeah, so and if you don't know what the Holy Spirit is, well, then pray about it because well, it's, if, it's if not your Well, if you don't know the Holy Spirit, then something's wrong, right? I mean, tr truly. Because well, sometimes we don't... Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Yes. Okay. Yes. So if you're a Christian and you say, I'm not hearing from God... I don't know what you're listening to because his voice, now his voice is in the Bible. It, well, you could you could verify it by reading Scripture, right? But yes. we should, and yeah. and I'm not I, and every now and then I've heard an audible voice. So have you? Uh -huh. uh, we're not talking about that. It's just that it's I hate saying this, but it's you know that you know that you know <laughs> you have to get saved. Before, I don't know how to explain being saved. Well, being saved is. Or the experience of being saved. The experience right. of being saved is this. But I feel line, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. You well, I I did today. I've been feeling the Holy Spirit as we've been teaching. Yeah, this. yeah. Today, and, that me too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 how yeah. do I quantify that? I don't, yeah, know what to tell you. I don't know how to tell you that we know that. We just know that. So so that's but but that's be, that's where we need to get in our life that we know that we know that we know that we know and and I've said that for years. And, and I say so no to the Holy Spirit. And I know I'm saying no to the Holy Spirit. And then we grieve the Spirit. Yeah, it's not, not a good thing. But, yeah, yeah. but I'm not talking to myself. I'm not telling myself no. Right. The Holy Spirit is occupied this body for a while, and I recognize it. And so, yes, he's right. Rick's right. You're walking down the street. Uh, the, whole, the Holy Spirit is, you know, and it kind of ramps up. Because like you said, every day, we, it was a, you know, his, his mercies are new every morning. And we have to walk out our salvation daily. Right. So if I'm walking down the street, yes, the Holy Spirit's in me all the time, sleeping, whatever. And I see a guy, it ramps up yeah. and it says, now, now. It's yeah, start, yeah, yeah. Like with Scott, I'm sure it does that. Yeah. yeah, there's just something inside of you that, and that's the Holy Spirit, I believe. And, and why do I believe that? Because when you read the scripture about what the Holy, who the Holy Spirit is, he's the third person of God. So he is God. He has all the attributes of God. He, and he, what is he? But he has a revelation of God that's a different revelation of himself yeah. than the Father and the Son, and he reveals things about the Father and about the Son, so that so we that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a revelation. We're looking for he's, another. He's a, actually more like the Father than the Son, if you had to say, because they're invisible. They're spirit. We, we, they're, they're spirit. spirit. We yeah, can't yeah, see yeah, 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 yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, and and, they, and, they, and it can't be more than because they're all equal. So, right. so, so the the words that we have to, to try to describe who God is are so inadequate. Right. I mean, even if even if I were a master of the English language, which I'm not, Billy's greater better but, at that than I am. We still can't find even the greatest masters of the English language no. cannot find a way to adequately describe who God is. That's why. I'm, I'm telling you, that's why Jesus had to come. Yeah, it says in Co yes. Colossians that Christ yes. is the uh, image of the invisible God. He's right. the exact representation. If you want to know who God is, it's, it's look Jesus. At Christ. Look yes. at Christ. That's why we had to have Christ. Because we, there's no way to describe God 
without knowing Christ. Yes. And still we can't adequately describe him. Right. And well, we none of us have seen Christ. We're right. blessed because we haven't. We, I believe in Christ, but I've never met him other than spiritually. Yeah. But the, and the Peter Holy, walked with him. And the Holy Spirit comes. That's why I think those 40 days, we can go back to that, yes, is so important. Yes, it was important. Yeah. yeah. But, but you have here, you have this, this conversation of who God is. And God is, is, and he says, Jesus was the Messiah, the one you killed. He he was raised to the dead. All these people believed. Paul and and, and John are taken into, and I'm going back to our scripture. Paul and and, and Peter are taken into prison. Peter and John. Yeah, or Peter and John. Sorry, (laughs) I had Paul in my brain from that other thing. Okay, then it goes to the very very next thing. I want to kind of finish this a little bit if we can. I don't know if we can. The next day? yeah, Yeah, it doesn't matter. The next day, the rulers... Let's see, let me put this on. The rulers, uh, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. So who do you have? Well, this is it's the council. It's the 71. Um, it's the council of the 71. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 but it's made up of who? Rulers, elders, and scribes. Yeah, so, yeah. You, so you have Thag- Sadducees, Sadducees and Pharisees, Pharisees yeah, and together. scribes and together. Yeah, right, the lawyers. Yeah, the lawyers. They're all mm-hmm. there, and they're meeting. So they decided to have a meeting. Look, this is interesting because these guys are the same guys that had meetings about Jesus. Oh, yeah. No and, different. Yeah. And now Jesus is dead, but they, he, they everybody's claiming for 40, 40 days that he, they've seen him alive. You know, the what would Jesus so, do thing, the yeah. little things became trite. Yeah. But Peter's the new Jesus, Peter right. and John, because they thought they killed Jesus. And now uh, you're still speak. You're mm-hmm. not going to see anybody in the book of Acts talk about anything but Jesus. Yeah. And we yeah. shouldn't hear you talk about anything but Jesus. <laughs> it's just the focus, right? Yeah. So, so Ananias, the high priest, was there. And so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had, they heard, the, excuse me, they had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. And this is what they say. Now, we, look. It's a bad question, by the way, for them. I, if yeah, I'm yeah. a lawyer, I don't ask this question. Well, yeah, because you know, you know the, you know yeah. the answer you're they're going to give you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, but, but I want you to see what they believe. I, what I mean by they, the people who question them. Yes. I want you to see what the people who question them believe. It, they have to believe some, something to ask the question. Watch what they Watch their question. By what power or what name did you do this? Do what? Heal the guy at the gate beautiful. Right. We're back at the third, the beginning of the third chapter. By what name did you do this? Because that's what stirred up this whole conversation. And if Peter had said, oh, I did it based on the on the temple's authority, they'd say, great, you're free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. take credit for this. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's not going to say that. So what does Peter do? I love this. Then Peter, filled, filled with the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Man, I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I mean it, seriously. Uh, do you feel that? Uh, I have, yes. Wow, I'm not kidding. Man, Lord, I pray for Kathy right now in Jesus' name. I pray for all those people. Lord, right now is the perfect time to pray. Oh, thank you, Lord. I mean, really, watch this. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people. <laughs> they acknowledge they have titles, mm-hmm. right? Yep. If, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified. He goes back to that again and again and again. You killed him, but he didn't stay dead. That's what I love about this, right? Whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. You're not going to find a stronger line in Scripture that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. I mean, you can say, well, Jesus and this movement or Jesus yeah. and this politician. You all want to add Jesus and baptism or something no, like that. No, 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 Because no. there's no other name Except under Jesus. heaven given by men where we must be saved. Yeah, no other name. And you don't hear this very much. What is that, Acts 12? Acts 412. Acts 412. That's, that's a strong, pro- you know, that's, yeah. that'll make you enemies. 
Yes. Well, yeah, because you're excluding everybody else. It's that's why you've just excluded Buddha, you, everybody, and Confucius, and Allah. I don't care what all philosophy you buy you buy into. It's just dead now. It has no power, and yeah. that that's what this is all about. You're not coexisting. <laughs> yes. There's no there's no bumper sticker. <laughs> yeah, you're well, you yeah. make enemies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you believe that? Can you believe that he was filled with the Spirit? And because it says, then Peter, filled with the Spirit. What does being filled with the Spirit mean? Oh, my goodness. We have a few minutes. What, what does it mean that we got two minutes? Maybe? Oh, six. Oh, 53. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. What is being filled with the Spirit? Well, if you look at how Paul describes it, I think it's one of the best definitions of being filled with the Spirit. But before we get to that definition, I want you to go back. And once again, I know this is ad nauseum, but we have to remember we're living in the last days. In the last days, the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out. Going to be, is being poured out. It's like, not, not just going to be, but now because we're in the last days, is. And it's a continual being poured out. Which means the Holy Spirit is continually coming presently with us in everything we do. He's always here. He's omnipresent. He's God himself. So he's, he's everywhere all the time. He's being poured out, which means that his power and his authority is being given to us. That's what's being poured out. When you talk about the Holy Spirit being poured out, you're talking about his Holy Spirit. You're talking about his power, his authority. Uh, every attribute that he is is being poured out to you. His holiness, he wants you to be holy. All these things are being poured out on you and me now because we're in the last days. So what, be, what it means, so there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit and there's a filling of the Holy Spirit. So the filling of the Holy Spirit is this. Paul says it like this. He says that um, he says that you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, and he compares it to he compares it to a conversation with being drunk. Mm -hmm. He said he said be drunk with the Spirit. So what happens when you when you drink alcohol? When you drink alcohol, which are called spirits, yeah, which are called spirits, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a whole another conversation, yeah, wrong good spirits, one. no, yeah, yeah, right. So you drink alcohol, and the substance of alcohol begins to control your system. If you don't believe that, then you don't know much well, about alcohol. Believes, everybody yeah, believes, but if yeah. you don't, you don't know much about it. I lived right. in that with an alcoholic dad, and things changed when he drank completely. It was not good. So, so look. So alcohol controls your system. Paul says, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Why does Paul use being drunk with wine as an illustration of being filled with the Spirit? Because you do stupid things when you're filled with the Spirit? No, 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 no. Because there's a control factor. So filling of the Spirit has to do with control. And if you look at the fruit of the Spirit, that's in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So self-control is this. It's when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon me, fills me, and liberates me or sets me free to make a good choice over the bad choice. I'm in control. I'm making a good choice over a bad choice. So when the Holy Spirit fills me, he liberates me. So right here, what? Then Peter filled with, you can say liberated. Watch, I'll show you. Then Peter liberated with the Holy Spirit, said to them, well, be, if, if Peter, if you looked at Peter before the Holy Spirit came, he was yeah, this, afraid. This isn't Peter he's, speaking he's scared. Either. He's scared to death, right? He's running away. He's running from little girls calling them the names by uh, fire. I would he's say dead. that filling with, I mean, because there's a, because we have churches that say yeah. all kinds of things about being filled with the Spirit. But five minutes ago, when you were saying I, you were being filled with the Spirit, yeah, 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 you were yeah, being yeah. renewed. And not, right. not, you know, it's an, it, it, it happened. It's a constant happening. And yes, 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 yes. But, but this is important. Watch. Then Peter, controlled with the Holy Spirit or liberated with the Holy Spirit. What was he liberated from? He was liberated from his own his own fear. Yep. He's liberated from his own his own selfish desire to take the glory. Right. He's liberated from. You probably stop there. That was it. He wanted to lift himself up. Yeah. Or or kiss their feet. One or the other. Yeah. 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 So he <laughs> didn't do either. Uh, and he was he just was taken out of jail. So he's he's liberated from the fear of maybe them dragging him back to jail. Or and he they could do all kinds of they could kill him. You know. I mean they they could find all ways to destroy him. And so he so there's all this going on. You know that it's it. How do I know that? Because that's what happens to us. He's a human being. Thank Things that happen to him, uh, happen to us, happen to him. We are afraid. When God says, go do that, we go, I, I don't know, God. I don't know if that's okay. I'm not sure, you know, that kind of stuff. We do that the, all the, the time. The thing that the Holy Spirit, the biggest thing you're liberated from is death. 
Yes. Peter's not afraid of dying now. And if you'll live your life not mm -hmm. afraid of death, you'll have a, a, lot, a lot more. Board. I want, we yeah, don't have time, but point. I wanted to bring up the word discernment because I know it's a gift, right? Yes, From yes, First yes, Corinthians yes, 12. yes, yes. But don't we all have discernment? Yes, we all do. Okay, yeah. so what I don't, I don't mean discernment like, is that a demon or is this? Right, right. I mean, because someone... Can we, we tell we, something? Can we tell that the Holy Spirit's in us? Yes, can we yes, tell the yes. difference between the voice of the Holy Spirit and my voice and the yeah. world's voice? And the answer is yes. It's yes. called discernment. Can yeah. you discern between an apple and a donut? You can discern between the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Sometimes we wish we could. <laughs> but so I just wanted to point that out because we were yeah. talking about yeah, yeah. we know that we know that we know. Right. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you should be able to discern it. Right, right, right. Not a gift. Right. It's just, it's you just know that you know. You, but but here he has filled. Good job. Good yeah. job. And it's 11 o'clock. we got to okay, go. Let me, no, no, no. That's perfect. Yeah. Let me just wrap this up a little bit and then we'll say goodbye. And then we'll start here tomorrow because this is really important. Start at, at, oh, we'll start at we, verse 8. We'll start at verse 8 tomorrow. Okay, eight. So look, God bless you. Just say this, in faith, say, Lord, I know that I'm in the last days. I know you're pouring your spirit out. Pour your spirit out on me. Fill me that I might glorify you in Jesus' name. You're his favorite. Pray that. Watch what happens. See you tomorrow. <laughs> that was good.